Grace and peace to you in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. And welcome to worship on this first Sunday of September. We are thrilled to have you worship with us this day and every day. This Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, so we will celebrate communion as you see me gathered around the communion table to begin our service. This is a time if you don't have bread or a cup to go and get that so that you might participate fully in worship to make sure that you have the bulletin with you as well. Today is a special service in that we are going to do the work of the people, which is what the word liturgy means together. We always do this, but today is going to be a little bit special in that the whole service is going to be building on the scripture that we would normally read at one part of the service. But today it will encompass the entire service. From Matthew's Gospel in the 18th chapter, verses 15 to 20, about what it means to be a part of the church. We are thrilled that you are a part of the church wherever it is that you are. We give thanks to God as we glorify God together no matter where we are. Let us begin this morning's worship service with the prelude.
join with me as you are able in the call to worship which is found in your bulletins. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Join with me as we go to the baptismal font to pray our call and prayer of confession together, which I'll note again that this comes from the text from Matthew's gospel, a perfect text for us in the call and prayer of confession. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. Join with me in praying this piece of scripture. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. If the offender refuses to listen, even to the church, let such be to you as Gentile and tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven.
Within this text from Matthew's Gospel, there is both a confession, but there's also a declaration. One that assures us of God's forgiveness. Again, truly, I tell you, Jesus says, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Amen. Maddie Bedell, our children's and youth director, has our time with children this morning that we will watch from a video that she has sent in as we watch now together. Good morning. Today I have this balloon, but I want you to pretend that this balloon is a person and every breath that I'm about to blow into this balloon is an action or a word that hurts this person's feelings. Oh my goodness, if this balloon slash person keeps getting its hurt, feelings hurt over and over, it might pop. That would not be good. Today's story, Jesus is telling us that the disciples are learning how to talk to each other. He really wants them to understand that if one person gets their feelings hurt by another person, they can let that person know. Jesus tells them this because he didn't want them to go pop like a balloon. Obviously, the disciples are not b balloons, and they would not actually pop into pieces. But they might have stopped talk to talking to each other, working together, or maybe even stopped being friends with one another. Jesus wants his disciples to know that they don't have to store up their hurt feelings until they go pop and stop being friends. This is why Jesus is telling them to talk to each other when one of them is, has their feelings hurt. Because that's how they can stay gathered together, even when difficult things happen to them or between them. When something hurts our feelings, we can also talk about it. We can talk to the person who hurt our feelings. We can talk to our parents. And we can ask for God for help, too. Let us pray. Dear God... Thank you for teaching us how to stay and work together so we can better share your love. Amen. we go to the table to break bread together and to pour the cup for one another, let us go to the Lord and profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed that's found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sisters and brothers in faith, we continue to give out of the gifts that God has so richly blessed each of us with, out of our time and our talent and our resources, to continue to give to the church with our pledges and our tithes. We continue to invite you to support the Mission Committee's Backpack Supply List, Backpack Buddy Supply List, to give of your time and talents in helping students in our county to have school supplies during this school year, this different school year. It is a joy to give so freely because the Lord is the Lord of abundance. And for that we give thanks. Amen. It is a joy to stand behind this table. It is always a joy to stand behind this table because it is a gift to invite others to join. It is a gift to invite others to join in a meal that the Lord has prepared for each of us. But it is an especially joyful gift right now. In the midst of a time in our country, in our world, our town, our community, our very lives, where everything seems sort of full of tension and sort of on the verge of potential disruption, that our Lord says, I want to eat with each of you. Jesus has been through times like this before, and he will continue to love us, to offer us grace and hope in ways that we can never imagine. It'll come in the form of a loaf of bread and a cup, a cup that doesn't seem like it offers much, but it can change everyone's life. That's why I invite you to come. Wherever it is that you are, if you're at home or you're at your office, if you're at the beach or the mountains, if you are across the country or you are right down the street in Tarboro, come. You with much faith and you with little. You that are suffering openly and you that are suffering internally and aren't quite ready to announce it to the world. You that are struggling with all that is going on in the world, come. The Lord invites each of us to just come, to taste a foretaste of the kingdom of heaven that is found in the simplicity of bread and wine. Thanks be to God for the Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Good and gracious and holy God, as we have alluded to tonight, you continuously invited, invite us to gather here. No matter what's going on in our lives, you say, come, I want to eat with you. No matter how great things are going, you say, come, I want to eat with you. No matter how bad things are going, you say, come, I want to eat with you. You have done this since the beginning of time when you created us and our ancestors, and you called us good. You have found a way to take pieces of your creation, the bread and the vine, and turn them into other pieces for your creation. Despite that fact and the gifts that you provided, we turned from you, but you never turned from us. 
You continuously came back to us, reminding us that we are yours. That no matter what, we are yours. And for that, we give you thanks. And we join our voices with all the voices in the choirs and the angels that have sung before you to sing the Sanctus together. You are holy, O oh God of majesty, and so holy, in fact, that you wanted to be with us in such a way that you sent your Son. Jesus was born as a baby, an infant in the arms of his mother Mary, to be cared for, and to be loved on, to be taught by us. And then he began to teach us and to change the world forever. He performed miracles. He broke bread with the highest of the high and the lowest of the low. He reminded us that you are the God of all. And for that we give you thanks. We didn't always like the message that he brought. The one of inclusion for all. It didn't matter. We always wanted someone else to not be there. And your son Jesus reminded us that you are the God of all. Jesus was arrested and was crucified. But death would not have the last word, and you raised him from the dead. And he came back triumphantly, reminding us that the resurrection is for each of us. Reminding us that he wishes to always be with us. We proclaim this through great is the mystery of faith. It is true and it is what we proclaim at this table that Christ will come again. But until that day, you never left us alone and you sent your Holy Spirit who descended upon his disciples upon the day of Pentecost and has never stopped enlivening in us since. Your Spirit is the one that prays with us and for us. The one that goes out into the world right now as we gather for worship in an empty sanctuary, but we are making a joyful noise to you across this town and this state and this nation. We give thanks that the Spirit is the one who prays with and for all of our concerns, all of our joys, all of our struggles, and every part of our lives right now. It is that Spirit that gives us that little glimpse of hope that we are so desperate to see these days. And for that we give thanks. We lift up all the prayers that we've said here and those that are said around the TV cameras and the computers and the phones that are watching, lifting them all to you, Lord. And all of God's people said, Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread and after giving thanks to God, he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to each of his disciples and he said, Take, eat. This is my body. It's broken for you. Each time you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. In a similar manner, after supper, he took the cup and he poured out the cup 
He said, this cup is the new covenant. It is sealed in my blood. It is shed for the forgiveness of sin. Sins that were, sins that are, and sins that will be. They are all forgiven. Each time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Sisters and brothers in faith, as we take these elements together, even though we are far, know that the Lord gathered around his table, his disciples, broken but beautiful people, and broke bread with them in the same way that he wishes to break bread with each of us. What a glimpse of hope in a weary world. What a glimpse of hope in a world built on that hope. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to take the bread, to tear a piece, and to know this is the bread of life. To take that piece of bread, to dip it into the cup. To know that this is the cup of salvation, the blood of Christ shed for each of us. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Good and gracious and holy God, you've met us at this table and you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You've continuously found ways to be a hopeful presence in our life. And for that, we give you thanks and praise. As we begin to transition towards the ending of this service, as we go out into the world to be your disciples, we know that We have been nourished here and sustained here, but that you will continue to nourish us and sustain us wherever it is that we go. One of the ways that we know that is to pray the prayer that your son Jesus taught his disciples, who then taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Go out in the world. You have been nourished here at the table, wherever it is that you are. The bread of life and the cup of salvation, do that for us. They carry us forward into the world. Go and be the church. Know that God created you, that Jesus loves you, and that the Holy Spirit will sustain you. Keep wearing your masks, washing your hands, and checking on your people as we continue to be the church and another glimpse of hope in a world so desperate for it. Amen.